Hey guys, it's Rainy Nights. Got my Code Red and Mountain Dew here with me, and I just finished watching Pineapple Express. I had a very good time with this. This is my first time seeing it, and I'm a little disappointed in myself for not seeing it sooner. So this is a huge thumbs up. Very funny, very enjoyable. Highly recommend it for sure. Uh, I'll be playing devil's advocate a little bit because it's my job here to uh, find some things to nitpick and criticize. And there are some, but they're by no means a, a deal breaker or a big deal at all. So, yeah, uh, Pineapple Express is about uh, Seth Rogen's character who is a... Well, actually, what's his job? I actually don't know what to call his job exactly. He delivers um, subpoenas to... Uh, adversaries, I guess. So uh, lawyers will pay him to deliver contracts that the, the receipt, the receipt-ent, I don't know, it's a little, that part's a little bit complicated, I guess, just because I've never heard of that career, but he delivers notices that people don't want to receive. So he, um, he, he really likes to smoke weed and he spends a lot of his time on the job smoking weed. So unfortunately for him, uh, one night out that he's smoking weed in his car, he witnesses the execution of someone which is done by a man and a corrupt policewoman. So now he goes on the run and uh, obviously the bad guys don't want any loose ends so they need to find this guy and they're able to track him down because he left a joint on the side of the road which is a particularly rare strand I guess or just a very rare type of weed uh, called Pineapple Express so there's only two people in total in the vicinity of the area that have access to this so that makes their jobs easier to track them down and um, yeah the rest of the story gets a little bit crazy but uh, there's a, dr a major drug turf war happening between I mean they refer to them as the Asians they don't really specify if they're Chinese or Korean or whatever but the Asians versus um, the mob boss, Ted, who is the bad guy that did the execution earlier on. So, uh, Ted wrongfully thinks that um, Seth Rogen is like some sort of hitman or he's involved or he's been hired by the, the Asians, um, but in reality he's just a guy who's at the wrong place at the wrong time. And the rest of the story is also dedicated to our dynamic duo of uh, James Franco, um, Seth Rogen and James Franco get their, um, their, their friendship. So it's an unlikely friendship. The, a huge point of the first act of the film is that Seth Rogen kind of considers, okay, what's his name actually? What's his actual name? I want to stop calling that. So we have Saul and Dale. Dale. So Dale considers himself kind of above the weed culture, I guess. I don't know. We don't really get his opinion too much, but we know that he doesn't want to become friends with his drug dealer. He just wants to get his merchandise and get out as quickly as possible. And then they do this funny little bit where Saul is like, God, I hate people who linger, you know? I just, I hate lingerers. And then he just persists on Dale not leaving his, his house. So the movie doesn't, the movie is disposable. and doesn't really have a point, but if it does have a point, it's about blossoming the unlikely friendship, um, which is not that unlikely. I mean, drug dealer and purchaser, but their personalities are very different, I guess. So, yeah, but that's the thing. Don't think about the movie too much in general. It's just a fun, wild ride. Uh, like with most comedy greats, you can expect a large cameo guest actor appearances, which are going to make you laugh a lot. So you can expect Bill Hader, who is hilarious at the very beginning of the film, love that, um, kind of sort of like a satirical take on the origins of why marijuana was illegal in the first place in the U.S., uh, obviously not accurate, but I thought that was funny. Um, we also have uh, Daryl from The Office, I'm sorry, that's just what he is, right? Or you can think of him as the, the Pontiac Bandit from Brooklyn Nine-Nine, but we never, we never refer to him by his actual name. No disrespect to the man, but that's just who you are. You're Daryl from The Office. So, Daryl from The Office, we have Ken Jeong, um, who is also very funny in this, and uh, 
there's, there's a quite a bit more than that. There's Danny McBride is actually not really a cameo, but he kind of gets like a major role in this as well. So a lot of funny people and talented people involved in this. So in general, the movie's just very funny, very energetic. Um, the action is actually way above average a movie like this because this is a comedy film. So you don't really expect action to be like this. This is actually kind of Pulp Fiction-esque action, like the same like caliber. Um, it's visceral, it's R-rated, you can see the entry points of the bullets and the blood and, you know, people's last words, and it's kind of brutal, so it's a surprisingly, it's a pretty decent action movie, actually, which is surprising, because that never happens in this kind of genre. Um, yeah, so overall, very funny, liked it a lot. As for negatives, as I said, these are not big deals, but it's my job here to find some things. So, first of all, Rosie Perez. She bothered me. I've just decided I guess she's not an actor for me because literally the only two movies I've seen her in, she was the same role in both of them. So she's a New York cop here. And then I watched her in Birds of Prey, which comes up 12 years later than this movie. And she's a New York cop there. So she was just kind of bothering me because it's like, okay, is that is that all your is that just what you're typecasted as you're you're the New York cop okay so again these are not big deals any of these things um, but just poking a little fun here so next thing Amber Heard honestly I mean nobody likes Amber Heard but you know back in the day even in 2008 when this movie came out did did Amber Heard really why is she in this movie I don't really understand the purpose of that entire subplot. You know, they, they try to do this joke where he's a 25-year-old man who's dating an 18-year-old high schooler, but, like, why? Like, I'm not saying it's offensive or anything, I'm just saying, why? What, what's the purpose of it? Um, because all the other comedy and stuff kind of leads to a purpose, but that one's just kind of there. So I don't know why there was a whole relationship subplot there. Didn't really work for me, so just kind of pointless. Uh... Although Amber Heard's father in this film is pretty funny when he gets his gun out, so I guess that is kind of the purpose, is just to be funny, but like, the movie's already really funny, so... I don't know. Just just kind of pointless. Didn't really need to be there. Amber Heard's character is just kind of irrelevant. Um, she kind of gets forgotten about by the end, too. Like, when things are ra wrapping up, it's like, okay, so what's her fate? Did, did he end up calling her and telling her that she's good to go home, or what now? So, don't really know. She was just kind of a forgotten chess piece that was not really needed to be there in the first place. Um, anything else? I feel like I had more than that, but it's really, it's not a movie to take that seriously. I guess the last thing for me is that the movie does kind of, so I'm okay with stupid and wacky, right? But it does get a little bit over the top in the finale when things are kind of closing up. So unfortunately, uh, the movie will prioritize humor over logic during that final climactic battle. So what that means is uh, people will start missing with their bullets. They don't know how to aim. Uh, sometimes they'll just like go on their little mono monologue tangents instead of killing each other. They'll all start doing the most, like all, literally all of them, not just one of them. Literally everyone involved will start doing the dumbest stuff possible because the movie's trying to make more jokes and more jokes and more jokes. But like y you're in a life and death situation right now. You should probably be doing something else like running away or shooting your opponent or whatever, but instead everyone's too busy making jokes and monologuing and it's just it's just a little bit over the top stupid, but still, I think the movie's really funny. Um, actually, one more negative I thought is that, yeah, it is more disposable, which is fine, but, you know, because this movie was pretty close to a 10 at times for me, but it can't reach that 10 mark because there are other movies in this genre that are not disposable, have a point, and do all the stuff that this one does as well. So, for example, Superbad, which comes out a ye came out a year before this one. Superbad is a 10 out of 10 perfect late night comedy. Basically, prime example of how to do everything perfectly. So, I can't really say with certainty that this one does anything particularly better than Superbad does. And Superbad has all of the perks of being a wholesome sort of 
Uh, I mean, I guess they're both friendship movies, but that one just has way more impact to it and way more soul and emotion to it, where this one's just more disposable and kind of blinking, you'll miss it, probably won't think about it too much after it's done. Um, so for me, this one's just not quite as impactful or purposeful as something like Super Bad. So I'm going to give Pineapple Express an 8 out of 10. Um, otherwise, I do think it's excellent. I do think it's an example, even though it's not the number one top tier like super bad i still think it's like top 10 best late night comedies i've ever seen and it is still an example of uh something i would refer to in the future to like you want to be like that movie this is something that's really good that you want to be like i still think it's that good um it's just unfortunate that it is outclassed by an adjacent movie that came out a year before it with the same cast basically in both of those but still it's still very good highly recommend it and I guess it does do one thing better than Super Bad. This one has better R-rated action than Super Bad. So if you want more of an action, bloody massacre kind of movie, like Pulp Fiction, then this one's for you. So 8 out of 10, really enjoyed Pineapple Express. Definitely will be seeing it again 